This video was brought to you by Stoinberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now at Nebede Supercharger, and today I will be retesting the Made in China Model 3 Standard Range Plus. And the reason for it is because they have done some changes recently in the, the BMS and how they uh, use the buffer. So I'm going to show you soon, but we're just starting up now, preparing 100% and then we will go. So they have supposed to re increase the buffer by 3 kilowatt hour and they all might also have changed some, uh, some, they might have changed the charging curves. So we'll also find out about that one. So, all right, let's uh, go, go and check it out. So we should almost be done charging now, but let me show you here. So previously when I tested it, um, I found out that it has 5.5 kilowatt hour buffer. Now, well, it's hard to see. see, now you look at the energy buffer. Now it has been reduced to 2.5 kilowatt hour. So we then free up three kilowatt hour to zero that we can spend. So that's why I need to retest it because uh, those three kilowatt are extra on the bottom that you suddenly can use now. Uh, should mean around 20 extra kilometers. So, but again, you could also use them before, but the, the problem before is that you will have 0%. And then most people, they will stop <laughs> once they have 0% and they've tried to charge. Not many people will try to go 5% or 10% below 0%. So that's why. But now, you know, we will then have more range in a way. So let's wait a little bit and then we do the test. We are on the move now. Uh, we've been driving for almost half an hour. Let me get to this one. They actually have it on both sides. Uh, this messes up the test a little bit because I wanted to cruise at 90 kilometers per hour, but uh, wait, wait, why is it 90? But I'm only cruising at 58 right now, around 57 real speed. Hey, why, why does it say 50 on that side and then 70 on the other side? <laughs> oh, no, no, it's the other side of the side. Oh, okay. Uh, well, hopefully this is not too long. Oh, shit, there could be Stau on the other side. Uh, okay, um, whatever. Uh, consumption is low, of course, uh, like with my Model 3. But um, yeah, you know, I should say, that if you if you're willing, I mean, if you are looking to buy a Model Three, you can consider using Marcus Beal's um, referral code. Then you will get uh, 1,500 kilometer of free supercharging, and it will also help Marcus. So great shout out to Marcus for lending me the car for so long. Okay, okay, it wasn't that long. It seems to be only a couple of kilometers. Uh, but then the, my concern is when I go back. Yeah, look at that merging on the oh shit Oh well, there's a little bit of rain. It's been raining a little bit uh, on the way here some section with some rain so um, Of course that will affect the consumption negatively, but not that much. We're still hovering around 120 watt per kilometer Which is remarkably good, but this test is mainly to measure the battery anyway not to measure the consumption because we have tested it many times. So um, yeah, no big deal really, the rain. Right, we are done now with the first test and impressive low numbers, 118 watt hour per kilometer. But okay, we're gonna look at the result soon. I will just charge up and then just for the heck of it, we do the 120 test and see what uh, the consumption is then. All right, we're now on the high speed run. So uh, I figured I have to cruise at 122 kilometers per hour. Remember that I'm doing 122 kilometers per hour in the 80 zone. Yes, just to be barely legal, guys. Remember, I'm speeding like crazy here in the 80 zone. This is madness. So I have to drive to the south, a little bit past uh, Harman and back again. We do to do a quick loop, 50 kilometers roughly, because if you go too far south, then uh, we end up in the Stau. So, uh, and then we go back to the supercharger. So that's the plan, just to measure the consumption. And then we can just calculate the range based on that. Now, no, okay, we hit a little bit of rain. So that uh, messes up the consumption a little bit, but uh, not too bad, bad. All right, we're back at the starting point. So at the 90 kilometers per hour test, we managed to average 118 watt hour per kilometer. That is remarkably good. It actually could seem like 20 degrees Celsius overcast, not too hot, gives you the best result. This was also this, the case in, in US when I tested range test. It was around 20 degrees, not too hot, not too strong sun. And then it seems like the HVAC doesn't have to work too hard cooling down the car. Or if it's 10 degrees Celsius, then it has to 
use energy heating up the cabin. So anyway, um, I measured that we have 52.6 kilowatt hour. That's actually roughly three kilowatt hour more than before. That's why we tested today because I saw it in the Scanmy Tesla. I needed just a confirmation that we have three more kilowatt hour. And that translates to, uh, yeah, this time though, because we have so low consumption, we managed to get 443 kilometers on the, so it's almost on par with the VLTP. But remember, VLTP is a different test. It is a completely different test cycle, but you can get very impressive range numbers from the standard range plus. And then, okay, for, for the high speed test, it was uh, shorter, but still uh, the consumption was also quite good. So yeah, very impressive, this car. You know, it seems like, it had the range in it all the time. It's just the Tesla just didn't unlock that buffer. It was, it has a humongous buffer on the bottom. Now it has more uh, realistic buffer like the other uh, Teslas. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.